today we want to talk about uh, essentially social networks, right? This is a big deal nowadays. Uh, and uh, uh, we want to see things like how people influence each other, how fake news spreads to social networks, and uh, similar things. Uh, but before we start with that, uh, let me just uh, let me turn on the light. And uh, while the system is floating, uh, let me just briefly remind you about conditional probability and uh, biases formula. So if this is your universe of possible events, and these are two events, um, A and B, uh, then the probability that A... Uh, Alex, Yes. the ink is not very visible on the video. Oh, I, well, uh, hopefully it will be better when the, there is more light and uh, uh, Let's see. This should help a little bit. Huh? I'm sorry, I don't know why they buy these markers with such strange colors. Can the camera see it? It's still slight, like, oh, right. very, yeah, slight. Well, we'll try, I'll try to press harder then. Yeah. So, yeah. you have two sets, A and B. Then, uh, probability that uh, event A happened knowing that the event B happened, right? If event B has happened, then A can happen only if the outcome lies in the intersection. All right? So um, this will be equal to the probability that A intersection B uh, happened divided by probability that B uh, happened, right? Because that's exactly the ratio between the measures of this subset and, uh, um, and B, right? Because if B happened, the only way how A can happen is that uh, uh, the outcome lies in the intersection so probability that the outcome lies in the intersection will be the measure of this intersection, which is probability of A intersected B, right, divided by the measure that uh, uh, B happened at all, right? And then similarly, probability that B happened if we know that A has happened, it's again equal to the probability of A intersected B divided with probability uh, that, uh, oops, the probability that A has happened. So from these two, we can derive the famous biases formula that says that probability of uh, B assuming that A has happened, right, is equal, and now we will replace, uh, we will solve for uh, B intersect of A intersected B and replace it here. So that will be probability of B, assuming that A happened, right, times probability of A, right, this comes from this equation divided by probability of B. Uh, 
not there. So, um, um, what is the next one? Let's see what I want to tell you. Oops, I, I switched the order here. B of A. Uh, right, so, how do we interpret this formula? Uh, before the experiment took place, right, we had a prior probability of certain event, right? And then B has happened. So B is the evidence in this uh, case. So to get the new estimate of probability that A is true, right, that A has happened, uh, given the evidence is the old prior probability, so this is posterior probability after performing the experiment in which B has happened. So this is prob probability of the evidence uh, to happen, uh, assuming that A has happened, divided by the total probability of the evidence, right? So this is kind of corner store of Bayesian uh, decision making, which is of course extremely popular nowadays uh, in artificial intelligence, machine learning, etc. Okay. So let's do an example. Um, so assume that we have the following game show. sentences uh, uh, written on them, and he has one half uh, true sentences uh, and one half of the cards are uh, uh, false sentences, and he randomly picks one of the cards, okay? And then uh, you have, uh, as we assume that the participants of this game show are sequentially ordered, right? And then the host, and there is a blackboard, okay? So first, the, uh, the host asks the first person whether he thinks that uh, the sentence is true or false. And assume that uh, the probability that uh, the participants um, can answer the question correctly is larger than one half. And just for simplicity, let's assume that uh, uh, all the pro they are all equally good. So they have all equal probability to answer the question correctly, even though uh, the case where uh, P is different for different people uh, is uh, extremely important for social networks, right? Because uh, it's not the same if the, the most, the best authority answers first or answers later. But let's see first what the rules of the game are. So number one, here's uh, a sentence that can be either true or false, and he makes his guess, right, whether the sentence is true or false, and then he records um, his, uh, his answer on the uh, board. So, for example, let's use one for true and uh, one for false. So, uh, then the host asks person number two, right? 
So person number two can now see what is the answer of person number one, right? And he can also use, so he has a public information provided by person one, and he has his personal information, uh, what he thinks about the given sentence, uh, uh, whether it is true or false. Uh, and he has to make uh, his mind and write uh, here either one or zero. Now, if he sees one, right, but he thinks the answer is zero, then he is kind of in a dilemma whether he should follow the answer of the first person or whether he should trust his own judgment and because the opinions are different we will assume that he tosses a coin right so if two things uh, zero and uh, one wrote one then two tosses coin to decide whether he should write uh, one or zero, right? So this is, uh, um, you can imagine reading someone's uh, Facebook page uh, and uh, uh, you see uh, someone saying, gee, uh, did you know that such and such is true, right? So he thinks that this uh, 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 this fact is true, but you personally might think that uh, this is actually false and now you are uh, wondering whether the first person should, uh, whether you should follow the first person or you should trust your own uh, judgment. So let us see, assuming now we are going to make a very dubious, in fact, assumption that the participants in uh, this game show or uh, uh, people uh, reading uh, social, uh, people on social networks behave perfectly rationally, right? So what will happen, the question is, uh, if uh, the third person sees two ones, uh, but he thinks uh, that the sentence is false, that that fact is false, uh, right? So are you with me? So you have a fact uh, say that with equal probability can be uh, either uh, true or false, uh, say some, uh, uh, some highly embarrassing things about Donald Trump. Right? It's hard to tell whether it's just a mudsling against Donald Trump by people who dislike him or uh, it's also very incredible that he might have done such things. So it's like 50-50. And then someone said, uh, oh, have you seen this Trump uh, dossier, what Trump has done? This is just awful. So he believes uh, in this dossier and assumed that uh, the second person also wrote on his web page uh, uh, that uh, uh, it, it appears that uh, such and such is true. And the question is now, what will the third person decide uh, uh, to write? Whether he will propagate belief uh, that this sentence is true or, or not? Assuming that uh, all the people in this social media act as perfectly rational um, agents uh, that uh, know a bit of probability and math, right? Which is kind of a tall order nowadays, but uh, let's make this assumption. So we are now interested, so this is how number three reasons, uh, right? Number three wants to figure out what is the probability that this sentence is true? 
given that I have two ones on the board, and I myself believe that the sentence is false. Assume that the, the third person doesn't seem it's very likely that this uh, embarrassing fact about Trump is actually true. Uh, but uh, he now wants to decide whether he is going to put on his uh, Facebook page uh, uh, estimate that uh, uh, the sentence is true or false. Well, let's compute uh, this probability. <coughs> so using biases formula, we have that uh, this is, uh, so probability that one is true given this public, so this is public information, right? And this is what he reads on to other people's Facebook pages. And zero is his uh, private information, which is his own opinion whether this fact is true or false, right? So now we can use the biases formula. Uh, what does it say? Well, this is prior probability, right? It's prior probability that the sentence is true, right? So this is probability. Uh, sorry, that the, the sentence is uh, <coughs> Yeah, but the sentence is true, right? Times probability of the evidence, probability of one, one, and then his personal information zero, given that one is true, right? With probability of the evidence. So P of one, one, zero. Okay. Now, to move one step forward, we have to derive another simple formula, which we will put here. What is the formula? Now, assume that um, you have two events, mutually exclusive events, A and B, right? And you have another event C, right? You want to compute the probability of C. Uh, well, uh, to compute probability of C, we can first decompose this uh, into two uh, events, C1 and C2. And then we will have, of course, the probability of C is equal probability of C1 plus probability of C2. But what is probability of C1? Uh, we know that the probability of C given A that happened, right, is equal to uh, probability of C given that A has happened, right, times probability of A, and probability of C given uh, B happened is equal probability of C given that B happened times probability of B, right? This is just looking at relative measures of C1 sitting in A, and C2 sitting in B, right? Uh, so uh, if you sum total uh, this, what do you have? You have probability of, uh, uh, oops, this is C intersected A, yeah? And this is C intersected B, sorry. So, right, because this is C1, and this is uh, C2, right? Um, so then we can sum up these two, right? And we get that the probability of C is equal 
probability of C, assuming that A has happened, times probability of A, plus probability of uh, um, uh, C, given that B has happened, times probability of B. So now we can use this formula in our case, right, to decompose uh, this cumulative probability into two, right? So we now have that this will be equal to the following. It will be uh, on top remains probability of one times probability of one, one, and so two public pieces of information, one and one, and his private information zero, uh, given assuming that one is true, <coughs> and on the bottom we will have it decomposed according to whether uh, one is true or not, so we will have P of one times P of one, one, zero, given that one has happened, plus we will have uh, um, probability that zero is actually true, uh, times uh, probability of uh, 1, 1, and 0, uh, assuming 0 has happened. So what do we get? Uh, now let's see what kind of estimates. Uh, can you move the camera this way? So let's estimate what the top and bottom. So we mentioned that we are assuming that the fact is equally likely to be true and false, so this will be just one half, right, times, um, let's see what is the probability uh, of uh, this event. Well, how can this uh, have happened? Well, there are two options, right? First option is that both these guys believe that, that P, that the, the statement is true, and this guy believes uh, that the statement is false. So this would be two true answers and one false, false answer. So it, this part will be uh, P squared times one minus P plus, but the second option is, uh, so obviously the first one must have thought that uh, the fact is true because he didn't have any public information of anyone, he had to trust his own judgment. But, so, but the, the other option is that this guy also thought that this is actually false, uh, but tossed the coin and thought uh, uh, that he should write one. So this will be true and two false plus multiplication here by one half, right? So the first one answered true, the second one answered the false, but uh, times but the cost coin, the coin toss uh, uh, swayed him to vote uh, one, right? Uh, and the second guy. Uh, thinks that it is false, so it is one minus p probability that he is wrong. And here on the bottom, we have one half uh, times uh, p squared one minus p plus one half of uh, uh, p one minus p squared, right, plus probability one half that the statement is actually false and uh, uh, given that the statement is false uh, what's the probability to get uh, these answers? Well there 
uh, so probability that this guy votes one is one minus p, right? Because he was wrong. Uh, and then again, uh, there are uh, two possibilities. Uh, uh, maybe this guy was also wrong. He saw it wrong, right? So this will be another one minus p multiplying, right? And this guy saw it correctly, so this will be p. Plus the second option is that the first guy was wrong, but the second guy was actually right. He thought it was true, but he did a coin toss and was made to vote one. So this will be uh, p times one half. And then we have the lab probability of the last one seen correctly is p times p. So let's try to estimate what this uh, is like. Uh, first, uh, we can cancel out this one half with this and this one half. Uh, then uh, let's see the common factor here seems to be p times 1 minus p. So I'll divide by p times my 1 minus p both to top and bottom. Right. So are you with me? Do you understand how we got this? Right. So this will be uh, 1 p is gone, right? And 1 minus p is also gone. Plus here we have one half of these two are gone. It will be just one minus p. And on the bottom we will have p plus one half, one minus p plus, and here we will have one minus p, right? One minus p. Uh, p is gone. This is gone uh, plus one half, uh, one half p. So what is this equal to? This will be uh, on top is one half plus, uh, so you have minus one half p, so it's uh, p divided by two. And on the bottom, what do you have? If you have p plus one half minus p over two uh, plus one <coughs> minus p over two, and what do we get? Uh, we get on top, we have uh, uh, so this will be, let's multiply top and bottom by 2. So this will be uh, 1 plus p. And on the bottom you have minus p plus p, that's 0. So you have 3 halves, so 3. Right? And because p is bigger, so this is bigger than 1 plus 1 half divided by 3 which is equal to 3 halves divided by 3, which is 1 half. So we get that uh, the probability, as the, at the very end, probability uh, of 1 given uh, 1, 1, and 0 is bigger than 1 half, right? So this means, uh, and uh, okay, so the underlying assumption here is that people actually base their uh, judgments uh, on uh, by estimating probabilities through a calculation. Well, of course, this is not what happens in real life, but uh, it kind of approximates what happens in the real life. Maybe this is uh, the most uh, kind of uh, uh, the strongest example if you assume that they were perfectly rational, right? So if they if they saw just two people 
saying on their web pages uh, that Trump did such and such. Even if you think that this is unlikely, rational estimation of what is true would be that, in fact, uh, this news is true. Now, in real life, maybe it will take more than two votes uh, to sway your opinion, uh, right? But uh, this shows that uh, this effect uh, of, it's called cascade of information, that uh, most of the time, people actually follow other people's opinion. And even if uh, false, uh, the facts get spread out in a really viral way, just because of the cascade of, uh, of information, <clears throat> right? So this explains right, how uh, fake news uh, can easily uh, spread. OK, so now uh, let us compute. What is, in fact, the actual probability that cascade of information uh, happens? Uh, <coughs> we see that when two consecutive ones uh, happen, um, it's enough to sway the third person. So let us now compute probability. Yes. Can you explain the top again? Yes. Yeah, thank you for uh, Please don't let me do anything uh, that you don't understand. There is no point uh, by any further, right? It's <coughs> if you can uh, use the benefit of being in the classroom that you can actually um, uh, ask questions. Uh, so please, I encourage you to stop me. So this is the situation. So this guy <coughs> see that two of his friends uh, on their web pages claim that such and such fact uh, that uh, prima facie can be both true and false equally likely, that the Trump dossier is true, or the Trump dossier was just good, because Trump has so many enemies that are trying to impeach him that it's very likely that they will make fake stories but then his past behavior is also such that you can believe about everything about him right so it's really a great example of a fact that is kind of uh, equally likely but assume that uh, <coughs> You are kind of a savvy person who knows American politics well, and you can actually decide whether this particular fact is true or false with probability that is at least slightly larger than one half. So slightly larger than the random toss of a coin, right? Which is a reasonable assumption. So now, <coughs> this guy has seen two people claiming that this fact is true. But he personally has doubt. He thinks that this is not likely to be so. And he now wants to put his opinion on his Facebook page. So he, we are assuming he acts in perfectly rational way. So what he does, he wants to estimate, given the evidence, what is evidence in this case? It's two pieces of public information that these two friends of his put on their web pages, plus his private information, what he really thinks himself about that fact. Right? So using Bayes', uh, Bayes formula and also this formula, first we have this, right? a uh, probability that A given B, B is evidence, right? So here, uh, for us, this will be, uh, this will be B, evidence. 
So probability uh, that the fact is true given the evidence is equal to probability prior to any evidence that the fact is true. Right? It's some kind of uh, intrinsic uh, probability whether this is true or false. And we assume that p of 1 is equally likely as p of 0, that it's 1 half. But anyhow, so it's prior probability of uh, 1 times the probability of evidence uh, assuming that the 1 is true, right? Divided by the probability, absolute probability of evidence. So now we decompose this, right, by distinguishing two cases when uh, the fact is actually true and when the fact is actually false. Well, if the fact is true, then we have this conditional probability. Uh, probability of evidence, right? Assuming that uh, the fact is true, plus probability that the fact is actually false uh, times probability of evidence assuming that the fact is false. <coughs> So p of 1 is 1 half, and now we want to compute probability of this evidence assuming that the fact is true. Well, what is the, this probability? This probability, this event, can happen in two cases, right? First case is that both guys correctly thought that the fact is true. And uh, uh, probability that the third person is actually mistaken. So it's p times p times 1 minus p, right? And lo and behold, this is what we have here, right? Uh, plus, what is the second option, right? So the second, so first let me write it first. Uh, option for uh, for uh, um, uh, one one uh, zero, right? 